Changemakers and Change Leaders, welcome back to my channel. It's Julia Cha delivering another amazing, helpful video today all about how to prepare your career before you have a baby. You may be at different stages of life, different stages of your career. If you're an entrepreneur, different stages of business and you're planning to have a baby. Everything I share with you is tried and true experience from my own personal experience, but not only that, after working with hundreds of women who have been in your situation, but also women who've had babies like myself, like many of my clients, without doing this kind of prep work. And I know that if you are pre-baby right now, then not everything I say here, and actually pretty much nothing I say here, will really register and sink in. Ladies, please remember that not every advice is equal. There are lots of women out there who will try to give you advice, and you have to remember, before you are receptive to that kind of advice, do these people's value system align with mine? being having a connected family having an incredible career being ambitious and achieving a lot at the same time being a fully connected family especially if you come from your own family or your generation line where you've had a lot of dysfunction in your family disconnection lack of love and a lot of isolation then you especially need to pay attention to what i have to say because everything i share with you in this video is going to help you not continue the cycle ladies remember whatever you do not resolve repeats itself it doesn't matter how much consciously you want to stop the cycle of the difficulties that you experience as a child being put on your kids. If you do not resolve the cycle, where the cycle ends with you, you will end up passing it on to your kids. And this is something that I did not make up. It is human, it is part of the human experience, it's psychological, and let me tell you, I am still in the position of undoing many of the things that I did not resolve before having my kids and being a career woman, being a woman in a world where our species have lived in patriarchy for millennia and millennia, and being an ambitious woman at that who does not want to sacrifice the value system of love, connection, and freedom. If this resonates with you, please, please, despite the triggers that what I say will generate within some of you, please, please make sure to finish this video. And even if things don't resonate, allow it to just sink in like a seed being planted. As with many concepts completely outside of our current belief system, it does take a bit of time to come around to it and for it to sink in. The first thing has to do with maternity time. The maternity time of where you are is never enough if you want to build a connected, loving family, not to mention with your recovery and the time that you need with your child to truly have a close bond. That needs to happen when the baby's born and what happens thereafter. Ladies, there are some parts that are biological and no matter how much we want to claim feminism, this biological part is something that we can't disrupt and let go when it comes to the baby's needs and what it takes for the attachment to form healthily. The time that you're given in the United States is only a couple of weeks postpartum. In Canada, it's one year or 18 months, but the amount that you get in terms of employment benefits, if you've been employed, EI we call it, or whatever your company replaces, that's not going to be enough and it's not going to be enough time for you to rely on the government or the institution. So this is where you have to leave the box of thinking that you'll be taken care of by the government or by a corporation to help you have this really crucial important time with your baby. Knowing that you have to plan for this right, you have to be prepared to be okay for three years without having to work. That doesn't mean that you're not going to work three years. Please, so many women who are ambitious get very triggered by this kind of message, but you have to realize that you have a very comfortable cushion that you can make decisions. Ladies, none of us like to think that our baby's going to need extra care. 
but we can predict how our baby is going to be born. When we have our baby, it is a soul contract. We get the baby that we need. We get the child that we need to help us develop into better humans. That said, you are never going to know, no matter how much you prepare, what your baby will need from you, what kind of resources your baby will need from you. That said, the baby can be born with certain genetic defects or can be born with special needs, or the baby may be extremely healthy but you choose to stay longer you cannot predict what you will feel as a mother I was so convinced ladies as an ambitious career woman that after one year of my son being born I had my son when I was 25 that be back at work and when I saw him at 12 months I could not make that choice I could not make the decision to go back to work and leave him in someone else's care I saw how small he was and what I thought before I had the baby, all the things I had planned, none of it was going to work. And after much crying and contemplating, I decided to stay home. And this was a very, very difficult decision. Thankfully, my partner was on board. We are not together anymore. But with that situation, he was on board to allow me to make the decision to do what I needed to do for the relationship that I have with my son, which is strong, which is amazing, and is preparing us as he enters his teens and becoming an adult. This is something that you cannot sacrifice because of money alone. You need to be prepared for three years of having a comfortable living. And if that sounds overwhelming, then you have to look at this other perspective. When you find yourself wanting to have a baby, look at your financial situation. This is something that so many of us neglect because our desire to have a baby is emotional, is primitive. Many of us have clocks ticking, many women do, because we don't. We have a set amount of time of when we're able to reproduce and have optimal results, so-called. Now with healthy medical care and so much self-care that women have, we're able to have babies well into our 40s, but so many women choose to have babies before their 40s or in their early 40s, not wait until their mid 40s. So knowing this, it is emotional. You will be driven to do things that logically doesn't make sense to your girlfriends, for example, and considering how smart you are, you still wanna make these decisions. Ladies, if you do not have your own home, if you do not have a very secure financial situation, then you must work towards that first before you conceive. And here is why. The last thing you wanna do is to be stressed and scrambled and feeling pressured to go back to work. And the other thing is you need to have very clear conversations with your partner, what will happen if the baby does need extra care or if you choose to stay home longer than your leave allows. Is your partner prepared for this as well? These are adult conversations you need to have it's uncomfortable but unavoidable and the last thing you want to do is to make some last minute decisions on something so important. If you care about your legacy and your children and the connection that you have, if you have strong family values, this is a conversation that you must have and looking clear picture of finances is also extremely important. I don't know how many times accomplished women go back to work six weeks later when they haven't fully bonded. And this is the other thing, ladies, you don't fully bond with your baby for about six months of constant care for the baby. Bonding is about true love and true love does not happen like that. True love does not happen the moment the baby comes out of you. You feel that connection, you love your baby, but your body has gone through a great ordeal and needs time to recover. And six weeks is really not enough for those of you who are in the States, for those of you in other places as well. And you don't deserve the minimum, ladies. You deserve a lot more than the minimum that you're given to scramble and to recover and to start working again. Naturally, a lot of motherhood does fall on the mother because of nursing, because of the connection. And if you're not nursing, it doesn't mean you're wrong. It means that the baby still needs to have a bond with the mother. And this is something I did not realize that it could happen, but bonding 
took about six months with both of my kids and when I talk to women who have healthy attachment with their kids they also talk about six months around that time is a time when they realize that they could never ever imagine life without this person and that is the unconditional love that has blossomed and foundationally formed between you and the baby and you want to experience that you want to be financially secure to be able to give yourself the time and space to do that and not to mention when you have enough money you can hire help that means you're not scrambling to look after the baby and to clean the house and to do the dishes or do the cooking you can outsource all of that and get help in a way that money can buy joy a peace of mind and happiness because it gives you options to connect with your family and to create a new dynamic with your family the next thing that you absolutely must look at is your spouse's, your partner's financial situation. You don't need to be married, but you must look at the baby daddy's financial situation. If he does not own a home, if he doesn't have a good nest egg of about three years where he can fully take care of the mortgage and look after you and the baby, he is not ready to have a baby. Ladies, if you truly consider yourself a feminist, please realize that you struggling and slaving away to meet all the deadlines and needs of other people and to be a mother and to be a provider, that is not feminism. That is slavery and you must never subject yourself in that vulnerable situation. Your man has to, absolutely has to be able to be a full-on alpha provider during the time that you are carrying his heir, you are birthing his heir and you're raising his heir with emotional, mental, physical healthiness. If he cannot provide fully and completely in case anything should happen with comfort, being able to outsource, then he does not deserve to be a father. He does not deserve to inseminate you and for you to carry his heir. So many ladies make mistakes here, especially accomplished ladies. You're very, very vulnerable to this problem when it comes to feminism and being a woman who is capable and accomplished. You assume that because you're strong, you should be able to take care of all these things. But why should you? Why should you struggle? At this moment, I understand it's very hard to imagine what it's like to have a baby and to raise a baby. But ladies, you don't really know a man until you have a baby with that person. And if you think you know your man because you've been dating for three, five, even 10 years, think again. When you have a baby with a man, his true nature all shows up. And this is you not distrusting him, but also you protecting yourself. Having your asset, him having your asset. That prevents codependency. That prevents unhealthy dynamics and power dynamics in a marriage or a partnership when you share a child. When both partners are equally financially secure and self-sufficient, then only then you can have true equality in a relationship when raising a child. And equality does not mean, ladies, that you are 50-50 equal when it comes to paying for everything. You need to also count in the time that you are carrying the baby your body going through this it's a huge transition and change and so many things could potentially happen in that time you could have sciatic pain and you need massages you could have some hip issues or with my second pregnancy I did not expect this but I had trouble walking because of the joints did not go back properly the first pregnancy and guess why that happened ladies because I was not financially equipped to get the right help I overexerted myself and that made my body age extremely during my prime 20s my late 20s can you imagine that you never want to be in that situation this is the what I hear from so many women who have overexerted themselves because they try to be equal with a man who doesn't have to carry the baby nor take time off work true equality is that you look at all of these aspects how an employer will respond when you're pregnant and you decide to take longer time than they're willing to give you if they're not willing to hold a position for you and when you're not sure what will happen in the future and you don't even know what kind of baby will come into your life as your bundle of joy you need to be fully prepared financially to be 
independent and then you can be interdependent if your man cannot provide fully and completely he's also not deserving of reproducing at this time it is a privilege to reproduce not a birthright it takes a lot to raise one child let alone two or three if you're planning or having more like many women choose to do once they have one baby the next point is that is tied to finances but it's looking at your career if there is any dissatisfaction in your career right now please know having a baby is not a gateway car having a baby and staying home is not the time for you to ruminate and think about what you want to do next and to channel all your energy towards us so many women make this mistake women also make the mistake where they have a baby in their late 30s or in the close to their 40s and decide this is their time off ladies having a baby is not a time off having a baby is going to be a greater challenge than anything you've experienced spiritually emotionally physically mentally knowing that this is not a downtime nor is a getaway car if you have trouble in your marriage having a baby will never ever fix it the baby will magnify the problems that you already have in your life that's why independence and interdependence is especially encouraged and if you have thoughts about changing your career or looking at different options for your career start now before you conceive get that ball rolling look into options get help prepare yourself do not try to do all of this when you're having a baby because what people don't understand is that once a baby arrives you are not going to have the mental space the energy because so much of adjusting needs to happen this is a huge 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 transition that until you experience nobody can tell you and explain to you how extremely your life is going to change if you are watching this please take this as a sign that you need to pay more attention to planning properly rather than emotionally going into it and dealing with putting out fires why you need to be fully engaged with connecting with your baby this is not to say that you shouldn't work after you have your baby or that you should be off for a long time no ladies that is now i'm saying it means that everything you do can be optional so that anytime it doesn't work for you or you're too exhausted you can leave it what did you think of this video please comment down below if you'd like to know more about an experience of motherhood and how much it changes you what you can do is read my best-selling book and my dare yet which outlines my journey my ambition of building my career my business and pivoting multiple times to get to where i am that will give you a lot of insights of what's upcoming and how you can equip yourself better please remember that when you have a baby you are about to go through a major spiritual awakening the reason is because when you have a baby you are delivering a spiritual being and that triggers a lot of your inner self that you have suppressed or have not acknowledged for a long time having a baby triggers your inner child and if you are someone who's open to doing the work this will feel even strongly it will come up so hard that you will end up doing a lot of healing work even if you've been doing a lot of therapy or coaching and you've been doing a lot of self-development when you have a baby you will be called to do so much more self-development and inner healing than you were ever called to do and if you're experienced in doing your inner healing you know how much energy and bandwidth that takes and you want to make sure you're taken care of in all aspects especially financially so you have the space and the time to bond and experience this beautiful experience of motherhood with options with freedom with connection and create the abundance where you don't have to worry about anything else but to focus on your journey i truly believe in your ability to create abundance on your terms and have it all thanks for watching it's julia cha and see you in my next video